This lesson is on maximum and minimum values. You have already done lots of work on maximum and minimum values, and even in this lesson, you have done some work. But we will go on with definitions of new terms in this particular lesson. So the first term we're going to look at are critical points and critical values. The first thing we want to know is what are critical points? Any point in the form of a, f of a, where f prime of a is equal to zero or is not defined. And we know f prime of a is equal to zero when a graph looks like this and you have that point there, or like this and you have that point, or even like an x cubed graph that looks something like that, and that would be a critical value point where it's not defined could be points like on the absolute value function or on what I call the butterfly function, some point where your derivative is not defined. What are critical values? These are the y values or f of a's where f prime of a is equal to zero or not defined. So critical points are the x and y values where critical values are just the y value. Let's have an example. We want to determine the critical points of the following function. And you will see the function is a graph rather than an algebraic function. So we're going to look for where f prime is not defined or where f prime is zero. And as we look at this graph, we can pick out this as a point where f prime is not defined. This point is where f prime is equal to zero. This point is where it's not defined. This point is where it's equal to zero. And that point is where it is not defined. So the critical points in a list are 0, 2, 2, 3, 4, 1, 5, 3, and 6, 4 where the function has the derivative that is defined and equal to zero or not defined at all. The next thing we have to learn about is the first derivative test. What is that first derivative test? The definition states if a f of a is a critical point and f prime changes sign at a, then a f of a is either a local maximum or a local minimum. So the first derivative test involves finding a critical point and then testing whether it changes sign or not. Let's do an example of the first derivative test. Determine the local maximum of f of x is equal to e to the negative x squared. To determine this maximum, we first have to find the critical point. And to do that, we have to take the first derivative. So we take f prime of x is equal to negative 2xe to the negative x squared. Since the critical point is defined at f prime equal to 0 or not defined, we're actually going to take that 0 option. And to solve for x, we see that e to the negative x squared can never be equal to 0, but we know that x can be equal to 0. So our critical point is when x is equal to 0. Now to use the first derivative test, we write down f prime test, and we want to know if the derivative changes sign at x is equal to 0. So the quickest way to do this is with a number line type of test. Put a 0 in, and if we put a number that's greater than 0, like 1, into our f prime, we see this becomes negative. And of course, this will always be positive, therefore this is negative. If we put a negative number in, like negative 1, this part of the prime will be positive, and of course, again, this will be positive, so it will be positive. So we know our function is going from increasing to decreasing, which means we have a local max at x equals 0. So in this example, we've employed, again, our critical point and then showed how the f prime test is used. Let's go to another definition that we need to know. What is the second derivative test? Well, the first part says if f prime is equal to 0 and f double prime is greater than 0, then f has a local minimum at a. Okay, that means we have something that looks like this where f prime is equal to 0 because 
that's that horizontal tangent line. F double prime is greater than zero, which means this is concave up. And then we have that local min. The second part of this states if F prime is equal to zero and F double prime is less than zero, then F has a local maximum at A. That means, again, we have the horizontal tangent line right there, and then it's concave down. That means we have a local max. Now, we have a third item to look at. If F prime is equal to zero and F double prime is equal to zero, we really can't tell anything at this point because we don't know whether it's a point of inflection or whether it is something else. So if both the prime and the double prime are equal to zero, we cannot tell what's going on. Let's do an example on the second derivative test. Let's continue with our f of x is equal to e to the negative x squared and take a second derivative on that. So our first derivative, f prime of x, was equal to negative 2xe to the negative x squared. If we take the second derivative, f double prime of x, we get negative 2. We have to use product rules, so we'll have x times negative 2x e to the negative x squared plus e to the negative x squared. Cleaning this up, we have negative 2e to the negative x squared times the quantity negative 2x squared plus 1. To use the second derivative, we will have f double prime at 0 where we determined our critical point. So f double prime at 0 is equal to negative 2 for the negative 2, and then e to the negative x squared is 1 times the quantity 0 plus 1, which equals negative 2. Because f double prime at 0 is a negative number, we have a function which is concave down at that point, which means we have a local maximum. And this concludes our lesson on maximums and minimum points.